Madison woke up early on the day of Diana's birthday party. Even after confirming everything multiple times, she couldn't help being nervous. So much was riding on this chance to prove herself. All the big names of the society were expected to attend the event. People had been planning what gift to buy the Weston matriarch for months. Madison arrived at the Griffin hours early on to find it to be a hive of activity already. Hotel security had set up a cordon 30 yards from the building, and the staff needed a security path to get through. Guests started to arrive at 6 in the evening. Luxury cars carried exquisitely attired people from all over the city. Bouncers were appointed at the main entrance to check the guests' invitations as they arrived. As the guests stepped out, they let out murmurs of appreciation. A red carpet extended from the sidewalk to the imposing front doors, where smartly dressed staff waited to escort the guests inside the banquet hall. The setting exuded an aura of solemnity, perfectly appropriate for Diana's status. Besides the doors of the hall, Madison and Ian stood welcoming the guests. Madison looked stunning in a long purple sheath dress. Her wavy hair was curled elaborately and tucked behind, some tresses falling artfully over her shoulders. Her makeup and the deep purple of her dress made her skin glow. She looked calm and composed as she greeted all of the most powerful people in the city. Ian stood quietly beside her in a black suit and matching purple tie. All eyes were drawn to them, as if they were the only people in the world. What amazed the guests the most was that no matter how many people Madison greeted, she could remember all their names, even though she had never met most of these people before. After she exchanged a few pleasantries with them, a waiter would lead them to their table. Daniel and Cassandra walked inside the banquet hall, but when people asked them, they stated proudly that it was Madison alone who had made all the arrangements. To the guests, the arrangements were impressive. The entire venue was booked to avoid any hassle for the guests. The room was filled with exquisite bouquets of roses and lilies. Diana's friends were impressed by the minutious detail that was being taken care of. They knew pink roses were Diana's favorite flower. The flowers lead to a subtle fragrance in the air. The overall impression was dreamlike, relaxing, and exclusive. Everything was arranged and designed to appeal to Diana. No detail had been overlooked, and all of this was a result of Madison's painstaking efforts. Naturally, everyone was very impressed with her efforts, especially since it was known how much pressure she had been under recently. After all her efforts, Madison was happy to see everything come together. But her mind couldn't stop whirling with checklists and last-minute details, even though on the outside she looked calm and composed. By seven, everyone had arrived, and Madison and Ian went inside the hall. As Daniel and Cassandra had been praising Madison, all the guests looked at her with admiration. After some time, the manager, Mr. Williams, came to inform Madison that Diana had arrived. The Westons gathered at the door to welcome her. The quiet chatter in the hall died down, and all the guests held their wine glasses ready for a toast. Two waiters grasped the handle of the large double doors each and slowly pulled them open. Diana was revealed standing in the doorway. Dozens of glasses were raised unanimously, and voices joined together to greet, Happy Birthday! Diana looked imposing in a bright red dress. Her diminutive figure managed to command everyone's attention. Thank you all, she said, but her audience was distracted by the shocking fact that standing beside her was none other than L. Thompson, who had been absent from the city for so long. Thank you, Diana said again with a bit more force as she walked to the center of the room. Everyone came back to their senses, but their smiles now were awkward, and they couldn't help glancing at Madison. Just a few days ago, Ian had been captured in a video with Elle under less than ideal circumstances. Yet now, here she was. Even after causing such a sensation on the internet, Elle followed Diana back into the heart of elite society. People couldn't help but contrast this to the treatment of Madison, who had been left to deal with the accusations and pressure from the press all alone. As waiters moved around with trays of appetizers, most of the guests kept part of their attention on Elle and Madison. They were expecting a fight or an argument to erupt, and they didn't want to miss it. 
Screaming under all the attention, Elle made her way over to Madison. Hello, she said, holding out her hand. I wanted to introduce myself properly. I'm Elle. Everyone's eyes were glued to this real-life entertainment. Madison didn't seem surprised at all. She shook Elle's hand and replied politely. Hello, Elle. Pleased to meet you. I'm Madison. There was no drama. The two women chatted inconsequentially for a minute before parting ways. Madison had been surprised by Elle's appearance, but she had hidden it well. She hadn't let it derail the careful preparations, and she had gotten the party rolling without any hiccups. Now she was beginning to relax. She had pulled it off. After the appetizers were served, it was time for presents to be handed over. Daniel was the first person to present his gift. Grandma, I pray you'll be blessed with good fortune for the rest of your very long life, he said, and handed her a rectangular box set with an elaborate bow. Everyone craned their necks to see as she opened the box and revealed a beautiful pair of jade earrings. The green depths of the expensive stones almost glowed, and it was obvious that they were of the best quality. Diana smiled so widely that he could count her teeth. You're a good boy, she announced, patting Daniel's cheek. The next gift was from Cassandra. It was in a large, flat box, which her assistant presented. As Diana lifted off the lid, Cassandra said, Grandma, here's to many more birthdays just like this marvelous day. Diana removed a layer of tissue paper and pulled out a dark green silk housecoat designed by Cassandra herself. The exquisite lines and understated embroidery spoke of real thought and deeply touched Diana's heart. Lastly, Madison and Ian stepped forward to present their gifts. Madison gripped Ian's arm tightly, feeling everyone's eyes on her. Since she was so new to the Weston family, she was not sure of an appropriate gift to choose for Diana. The couple glanced at each other and spoke in unison. Grandma, we wish you a smile that will last forever. The words were simple and sincere. Ian handed her the porcelain tea set that he had chosen as her gift. Mr. Williams and two waiters pushed over a cart containing Madison's present, a huge eight-layered cake designed to look like a blooming rose. A soft ah ran through the guests. It was exquisite work, with petals made of pink icing enfolding a delicious-looking center. Diana examined the cake and nodded slightly. All evening, she had been hearing people praise Madison for her organization of this party. She set her present from Ian aside and asked, I heard that you arranged this whole event yourself. I thought that was your present. Why did you make me a cake as well? Madison kept smiling as she answered, Grandma, as the newest member of your family, shouldn't I do my best to give you the perfect birthday? All the assembled guests smiled in approval. It was indeed her role to take this on, so it spoke well of her that she didn't try to take any extra credit. Madison had never intended the party to count as her present to Diana. Ian stood beside her and watched with a slight smile. Madison surely knew how to make Diana happy, he thought with a proud gleam in his eyes.